Epod Studios. Al Horford. Al Horford. This is Al Horford. Al Horford catching slam. Al Horford for three. You're listening to the home of Boston Celtics basketball. 98.5, the sports hub. Toucher and Hardy, the reviews are in. I got to stay on top of that kick in about five minutes from my time. Hear what he said. Now more of on the sports hub. We interrupt this program for breaking news. I can't use it. Newsflash. All right, I want to take a look at this lady. What what do we got going here, uh, Hardy, as the Toucher and Hardy show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Uh, there's a mother in Florida by the name of Mel- uh, Michelle Klein. She's 35 years old. She has three kids. And, Ew. Um, <laughs> she has now been banned from dropping off and picking up her kids from a Florida Christian school. Because on the back of her car, which is a Dodge Durango with the cool racing stripes, ooh, uh, on the back of her car, in the back window, she advertises her OnlyFans page. Michelle Klein? Michelle Klein. Uh, K-L-I-N-E? Yes. Uh, no, C-L-I-N-E. Oh, I'll um, show you. OnlyFans.com slash Piper Fawn, which doesn't sound like a made-up name at all. Piper Fawn. Is her OnlyFans account, and um, now she's she, like a small deer, like a young deer, a fawn, yes, a, a wide-eyed, white-tailed doe. She is uh, now forced to walk her children across the street to get them to school, and some parents want the family expelled entirely from the Liberty Christian Preparatory School. Well, the Liberty Christian Preparatory School has a very phallic uh, tower on top of it. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to tell me with that. You sit on that. That's going to hurt. All right, here we go. Here is the, uh, the, the, the OnlyFans lady. This is what I am looking at when I pull up behind one of these vehicles. Facebook messages, complaints, and TikToks. You ban a vehicle. Taking the front pew at a private Christian school in Tavares is... Pew? What are we in Europe? It's called a line. <laughs> dum dum. Q. This is why we're going to hell in a handbasket. If these kids could just take the tube, then they wouldn't <laughs> need someone to drop them off and pick them up. I know. You can't even see it from the top of the double-decker bus. Why don't you just put some guys that don't smile in front of the school and scare everyone? They have to leave class three times an hour and go to the loo just to have a good cry over it. Or they can go outside and smoke what they call... Hey. Uh, yeah. I'm not going there. Facebook messages, complaints, and TikToks. You ban a vehicle. Taking the front pew at a private Christian school in Tavares is not just a tiny, tiny little emblem on the back of a car. It is taking up the entire windshield, back windshield of two vehicles. Lexi Thomas is a parent at Liberty Christian who wants this ad on another parent's car to stay off campus. All right, what is the ad, Hardy? The ad says OnlyFans.com slash Piper Fawn. That's it. And it's got the OnlyFans right. corporate logo. That's it. That's all it says. And if you're Piper Fawn, the best way to get a OnlyFans going is through uh, wallpapering your car. That is, it, uh, does she also walk around with a sandwich board <laughs> that says uh, OnlyFans? I think she has someone uh, doing those one of those twirly signs out in front of her house. Where they uh, apparently make the make the videos. Oh, her husband's nothing to look at. The fact that her she's good looking, and the fact that her husband is a real loser. Look at her. I mean, he's got a dumb gold chain with an anchor on it, and you, everything else. Like, he's think, a real Florida trash. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted you to you know <laughs> lean into that good looking a little bit more because. That's, oh, you would sleep with her in ten seconds. I don't know if we'd be doing any sleeping. That. <laughs> It'd be nothing but sex with that gorgeous, gorgeous woman. You understand? <laughs> no sleepy, sexy. Oh, yeah. All sexy time. I would love to marry her and have sex with her all the time I for the rest of my life. I just want to stay up. All, all I want to do is stay up all night and have sex for hours. But if you, oh. but if she's a blonde woman with a good body. Now, she has had many kids, and she's got very tasteful tattoos. But her husband is like a, just a pile of trash. 
But apparently he bangs her in these OnlyFans, too. Oh, yeah, there's more on that coming up. Why do they go to Christian schools, you would think? It probably has something to do with not liking the public schools there. I, I, I Wait, don't are they think, on strike? I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> See that, Hardy? He kept it under control for 55 minutes. No, he brought it back to being uh, timely and topical. John. Thank you. Well done. We should Thank all you, just Hardy. watch and listen. Yeah. I, maybe, and learn. I'll tell you, I'm more likely to honk at her car than a dumbass sign about <laughs> teachers' association. Well, even if they have the drum set out there and they're playing the drums along with the pickers? Yeah, even if like an old gray haired broad is sitting there with a tambourine, yeah, no, I'm not going to honk. <laughs> that other parent is Michelle Klein. And what she has is an OnlyFans. Well, it's definitely linked to, you know, explicit content, adult content for sure. Klein, who goes by Piper Fawn, says OnlyFans is her business and way of life. My husband and I have this. It is a way of life. It is. It is. Making those videos is a way of life. Do you guys, have you guys ever been on OnlyFans? No. No. Okay, because I completely understand the appeal of it. I think it's porn where, like, it's kind of more intimate that you are, like, directly talking to the person. But I've never been on OnlyFans. I um I but I could definitely see if I was in my twenties or thirties being on OnlyFans. Even though I'm taking testosterone, my urge to like get that involved in my solo uh sessions, I'm pretty much just good with the with porn. Like at this point. <laughs> oh like, pretty much good with the free porn that you can access in yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The thousands of but places. Like when I was like you know, doing that multiple times a day, I, I can see the appeal of OnlyFans. Like, I, I could see it. But this is another reason why I think that, that there's a whole generation of women that are finding trouble getting mates at their own age. Because you could just go to OnlyFans and this, this Milferu is sitting here uh, letting you know what's what. While her loser husband bangs her. My husband and I have this, you know, little wild, you know, behind closed doors lifestyle that we've now decided to share. But not all parents want what Klein is sharing, shared at school, with some moms complaining to Klein. By the way, if you have, if there was a lady that had a site with her and her husband having sex on it, and they went to your kid's school, it would be the greatest thing that ever happened. Like, if there was a Milferu walking around and you just had to put five shekels on the thing to watch her, like, uh, doing all kinds of stuff, they, that'd be the greatest. Or if there's a particular, you know, like a husband that, you know, you're chummy with in the schoolyard and you're thinking, yeah, I, 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 wonder, I wonder how that goes down. You know, you let your mind wander, Fred. You got to be free. If there was an the OnlyFans of, like, a hot mom, if there, there was an OnlyFans where the woman wanted you to watch her naked of a, of a hot mother at your kid's school... That that would have been a, that would be a detriment to you at a at a Christian school. They have to say that it is. They have to. I'm asking you personally. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Because there's no. I mean, if if there was this woman that went to your kid's school and she's good looking and she's like, hey, look, I'm naked all over the place. At the very least, they give you something to talk about at pickup. If you're all standing out there, yes. Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to. I mean, you talk I'm talking to, to you. No, no, what I'm saying, no, no, no. It depends on if Talk I'm show. the person, you're asking me the question. I'm asking depends, you. I know me, that. I'm me answering to you. asking you, would you, what, would, wouldn't that excite you? It would, it would be fascinating to me, but as far as telling other people about it, more to what Hardy was saying, if you were the certain section of people, you have to beg off of it. But for me personally, okay. yes. Here's the deal. If my kid was like, can I sleep over at their house? I'd be like, no. Right. Because I right. shoot pornography. There. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, like, no, you can't sleep over there. So, poor kids, that's not great for them. But that's not my business. I'm not raising their children. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't encourage my partner to to have an OnlyFans if there were children. I wouldn't. However, being a, a casual observer with no skin in the game, I would, I, I, you're not telling me that we would all be delighted. Delighted. We would be over the moon. And so, and so would all of you listening. Now, I wouldn't let my kids sleep over there because that's a, sh- a house where they shoot pornography. It's well, great. they don't shoot the pornography where your kids are there. Yeah, but that's my job. I, 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 my job is to keep them away from things. where they, Any place they shoot pornography, I don't want my kids. That's right. But the, if the, the woman smells sh- alone. If the, if we, you, you hear about the smells from the sets. Well, you know the best story ever about my friend who, um, I'm not going to get into it now, but my friend who uh, was renting out a house that he owned while he lived in New York City. He rented out his house in Atlanta. I'll just 
two second story. Uh, he was alerted to by some people that there was some riffraff going in and out of it. Yeah. He did some investigation, and they were shooting hardcore things to the wall, right. gay pornography okay. in the house that he was renting yeah. out. So he had the, he kicked the guy out, and he had everything, the walls painted and the rugs taken. <laughs> well, I would do that for any form of pornography going on in the house. Uh, I, mean, I don't think just... you know the extremes that these gentlemen were going to. Well... I mean, I can get into it with you. I'd rather you didn't, but uh, the audience it, could use. Doesn't that. it seem like the school's missing out on a fundraising opportunity? They're always asking you to donate things when they're doing the raffles and they're doing the the special nights and the trivia nights. She could give away memberships to the OnlyFans, or she should tithe ten percent of her pre tax income from OnlyFans. She uh, says she's making a lot of money on this thing. Yeah. With some moms complaining to Klein she's good and looking. the school telling her not to use the main entrance. And she's with, again, a real loser. Like one of them Florida losers. You're giving her way too much credit for being good looking. You don't think she's good looking? No. You guys don't think she's good looking? She's no. got a tremendous body. I think What's the, wrong with her? Florida she's, eyes were, were mentioned oh, on more than one occasion. If here she in the walked in this room. studio and, and, uh, and showed any interest in you, you'd let her husband watch. No. <laughs> Not my type. What if I? Okay, so you don't find her attractive. What if I told you her husband would be involved? <laughs> now have I seen well, the pot at all? Is he a good golfer? <laughs> oh, you could go play golf afterwards. I'm then, sure you'd bond. Then I'll. Then we can talk about it. He'd break bread. He, he probably. He probably belongs to a good club if she's making all those money. And instead, drop her kids off across the street. I was forced to have to, um, you know, take it off or not come on campus. But parents at this private school say there's a simple solution if Klein wants to use the main drop off. Why not take the decal off? And that would seem like an easy thing to say for sure. But for me, you know, it's, it supports my family. This provides a, a very comfortable way of life for us. And it's legal. You know, I pay taxes just like everyone else. I'm not breaking the law. I just offended people. That's. A distraction to my children and no matter how poorly or how good I parent porn is there and if that's kind of the first thing they're seeing when they're going into um, a place that should be educating them uh, well I can't disagree with that last woman 20,000 a month up to $20,000 a month she's making on her only fans well I believe it because we've had people in this very studio Kendra who said that one guy paid her like 30 grand over COVID to just see her foot. So like my, my understanding, if that's the case is that you don't need like a, a big number of people to, to hook it up. My guess. Okay, good. No, my guess, the added publicity from this, she'll get enough new subscribers to where she can afford to take the decal off of her back window. Oh yeah. My, my point is that I think you only need probably about a hundred guys to make that kind of money. Like, like, you would, you know, since porn is free, there's a lot of people willing to pay a lot, a lot of money to get uh, a more GFE experience. My, my, and my guess or, or also is, a GF experience. is for OnlyFans. I imagine there's some kind of like auto renewal system in place. These companies seem to be the types that would uh, take advantage of somebody just. Uh, sign up right away, but you got to sign up for auto renewal. Okay, I've already made the crappy decision. Go ahead, just click yes, yes, yes. I consent. Yes, yes, yes. Back in the in the ancient days, did you ever pay for pornography on the internet? You, no. You, oh, I did. No, I did. Never. Did you ever? Did you ever buy a dirty magazine? Um, no, I was too chicken. But I did order videos uh, from a uh, like a mail order thing in college. But I was too oh, yeah. chicken to buy pornography. I've never bought pornography at a store. I was too chicken. I had friends that did not care. I had friends that would just buy Hustlers and just be like, what do you want I, out of me? I bought what? Hustlers at the airport. Dude, Ooh. I bought I bought one Hustler once, and it, I couldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, one. No, one that was like 20 bucks, and this was 25 years ago. I'm like, for a magazine? Well, it's like OnlyFans. They figure that if you're buying a Hustler at the store... You're buying a hustler. Like, the price point's not the issue. <laughs> like, once you've grabbed that hustler off the stand and put it up to the counter, yeah. you're committed. Yeah. Like, you really want that hustler. Yeah. I, my friend Jay, uh, we used to go, uh, like, every time we drank, and, like, it would be, like, 2 in the morning, we, he lived right across the street from this, like, liquor store that was open or whatever. You know Detroit. You can sell liquor easily, more easily there. And we would just... He'd, 
on the way home, he would just go, and walk in and buy one of those, like, three packs of porn bags. And this is after they're, the they're internet. They're all sealed in the shrink yeah, wrap. Yeah, 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 in the yeah. shrink wrap. He would, like, buy that, and it was like, you never knew what you were getting. Was there a leg show in there? I mean, who knows? Was there a nugget? And then we would Let's go to the woods. Break. <laughs> then, 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 <laughs> then afterwards, like a like like you know, to give back, we'd go to the woods and dig a hole and put the porn in the woods. That's where I got all of it when we were kids. That is something that kids will never get again. Found, I, found porn in the woods. How about under a bridge? Under the bridge, like chili pepper be- style. Yeah, under the bridge downtown is where I found a worm caked Playboy. But uh, yeah, they were under the bridge in the in my in Canterbury Commons uh, Park. They were in there too. Nice. All right, when we come back, is is the Jaff man here? He's going to be on Zoom. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Here's a question, very quickly. Be real. Would Hardy purchase a Marsha or Jan Brady OnlyFans? Oh, you can't do that. They're too young. Uh, never mind. Don't. I take yeah. that away. All right. We'll be right back. Gross. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Country music has so many generous artists who always seem to jump in to help those in need. We're spotlighting five who lead by example and lend a helping hand to charitable causes. See who made our list when you text GIVE to 45911. Text GIVE to 45911 and read all about it right now on Backstagecountry.com. Tuncher and Hardy on the Sports Hub. Hey, we're Tuncher and Hardy. Billy Jaffe is a Bruins analyst, and he is someone who is uh, for Nesson. He is delivered by Granite City Electric's GC Night Train. Electrical contractors get on board the GC Night Train and order your materials to be delivered overnight to the job site the following morning and to and save time and money. Go to GCNightTrain.com. Billy joins us in the Volkswagen Dealers Oxford Holland. Hey, Billy. Hello, Fred. Hi, Hardy. Hi, Billy. Boy, you are full Hi. of energy. What's up, guys? What's happening? So the, late night, late night, getting back, getting after. What's going on there? Um, I'll tell you, the the athletic is impossible to navigate. <laughs> it really is impossible to navigate. I don't, I don't care for it. Um, they did a a, a player survey, Billy, uh, in the athletic uh, for the most. Uh, Underrated, overrated, best player in the NHL, best goaltender. And I'll let the cat out of the bag now. The only person that showed up in any of it was the uh was Swayman. He was like down on the goaling rankings. Omark wasn't in there at all? No, he was it. not. But uh I'm gonna pull it up. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Just say it on the air. <laughs> Didn't have the well, mic on, but Mike put his hand up yeah, and he said yeah, he thought no. Omark was in there as well. All right, well, I'll I'll look. And, but uh, but but I'm telling you, Pasternak wasn't in, involved, and there's a lot of teams. Pasternak mm-hmm. was not involved. What do you, what do you what do you make of that? Do you think Pasternak that's unfair? I, yeah, that he should be. I, well, I saw it late last night. I was getting home from the NHL Network, and I, I finally found I found it as well. And um, yeah, I, I thought he would have gotten more of a uh, recognition. Would he be in the, the top few? No, I mean, you're talking about McKinnon and obviously McDavid and, and Kucherov. Yeah, it was basically but, a three team. It was McDavid, yeah. McKinnon, Kucherov, and Crosby got a little bit. Crosby's been out, out, outstanding this year. You know, he, he really has. It's amazing what he does and has been able to do. Do I, I thought David would have gotten a, a, a nice oh, mention Omar, in there. Well, got 1%. Okay, go ahead. You, okay. You, you thought that Boston, not, because I'll give you some names that are on there. I found it. Uh, it, it's McDavid, McKinnon, Kucherov, Crosby, and then, uh, like, Austin, I can't pronounce even some of these names. There's some guys I've never heard of, but, like, Flip Forsberg, Barkov, Austin yeah, like, Matthews. All right, Philip Forsberg, that, I, I, it's good, it's interesting you bring that up. And he's had a nice year 
he's been a good player, but I mean, he, I take Pasternak, you know, 99 out of 99 times. And, and that's, you know, David's game has really started to round into form fully round. And I, I don't, you know, they, I don't know how many players they, um, they pull for this. Not sure what they get, but I was very surprised that David wasn't mentioned in there for given what, what he has been able to do, especially given how so many players that were surrounding him over the years are no longer there. Right. How much he's doing now. With all that said, I, I mean, Boston Bruins and the players around him know how important, how valuable, and how amazing he's been. Yeah, I mean, he's the third leading scorer in the NHL, point producer, and and it's not by chance. I mean, he's repeating what he did last year, if not even better than what he did. So maybe, Fred, maybe it's just one of those things where it takes seeing is believing a couple of times for a guy like him, and maybe next year he'll get the recognition that he deserves. And just in fairness, Paul... Pavel Zaka is, is one of the most underrated players in the league, but he's way down the list, so I apologize for that. And Omar got 1% of the goal vote. Uh, he's he's down there as well. Uh, who do you think is the most overrated player in the league? This uh, Trevor uh, Negras Yeah, Zegris. 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 Trevor Zegris. I don't know how you pronounce you it. You know what? Trevor Zegris um, gets a lot of it because it's a lot of – a lot of style, a lot of pizzazz. You know, he does the hands are amazing, you know, that type of thing. He has to mature as a player. I get why the, the players I mean, when I would put him into that category of, you know what? What did I just say? Seeing is believing type of thing. I, I need to see it. He needs to become more of a complete player, Fred. There's, there's no question. Um he's, you know, he had he held out, he signed a three year contract with Anaheim. They kind of helped, they tried to hold a harder line with him. Still got, I believe it was five or five and a half million uh, with Anaheim, but it hasn't been a, a, a great year for him there. They're trying to change the culture. And here, that's a kid. I can see why, you know, that, that players would say that he needs, he needs to do more because he's got a lot of attitude. And now you just want him to show up and do it in, in more, in a more consistent, but also a more, it's not that the fancy stuff isn't good. It's just that can't be your calling card. At least I don't think it can be. All right, so the Bruins have been fortunate this year that they've had young players be able to step up and at least be on the the big squad. But, you know, they're playing so well. We had Fluto Chinzawa on earlier in the week, and he was talking about how they could use another scorer. And uh, short of that, another a big forward, but he said that it's hard to find big forwards. Yeah. Well, I I was going to add that there was a huge trade in the NHL last night for a big time forward. Calgary's only all-star went to Vancouver, but for an arm and a leg for a rental for the end of the year. So that's where I'm getting. Uh, So the Bruins are in in a position to add. They obviously would like to, we all agree on that. I sure you do too, Billy. Uh Um, I do. According to the Athletic, the Bruins have the thirtieth ranked. Uh, uh, continue to, but I mean that makes sense. They're they're good, and they have guys that have moved up this year. But they have the thirtieth ranked system in the uh, NHL. Do they have the, Do they have the horses to to uh, the assets to make a move of any consequence at the trade deadline? Um, I think they have assets. It's not. It is not going to be, you know, look, Don, Don Sweeney has, has always been aggressive. Even, even when he says, well, we'll wait and see. We don't know what we can do somehow, some way he's worked it up. Now this year, just to set the table a little bit more, they don't have a first, second or third round pick this year. Their first pick as of right now, Fred and guy is in, in the fourth round. Um, so they don't have an asset to trade as far as a first round pick goes. Uh, but they have young players. You said it earlier that have that have been able to show themselves. The, the Beechers, the Low Rise, the Patras. Um, could one of those players eventually be involved in something? Rhetorically stating, yeah, maybe they could. Maybe you use that. Those those players carry a big, uh, you know, a lot of weight then around the league because also they aren't just draft picks anymore that are unknown. People see them. You know, they've already seen now some of what they could do at the highest level of hockey. So you have to take that into consideration. Are there, you know, could they take draft capital from the, the you know, the, the 25, 26 draft, which sounds so far away, but it's only one or two years away. Sure. They could. Um, I don't think it will be as big as we've seen in the past. Last year, they went big, right? They, they went big and they, they with the Bertuzzi's with the Orlovs. 
Um, they, Fred, I don't see that happening, but I still think that there's something that they can do and they can try and make something. Happen. I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're going to try. I absolutely think that they will try come. It's March, uh, March 8th, if I remember correctly. March why, 8th, the trade deadline. Uh, why is it so? Fluto said it was going to be really hard to add size at the wing. And then he kind of alluded to uh, that there's just not that much of it. Well, has the game changed that much? Is that it's hard to find yes. like a fourth yes. line big dude, well, heavy dude like that that can. I mean, they have to be able to play now. But right, like, r- it, remember, right. remember, Fred, Fred. Last year they bring in Garnet halfway, right? And then the, you you say, okay, he's a big dude. He plays hard, whatever. Then he gets signed to a contract, for instance, you know, with much more than the Bruins could afford. And so those guys who aren't there many, the game has changed a lot. Yes. The premium on skill and the way that the kids are developed now is so different than, so, you know, in the old days and, you know, going back even 15, 10, 15 years where you got a kid, you say, just play up and down your wing, do what you got to do, fight when you got to fight. You hardly see that anymore. I mean, you know, we're, you know, we're celebrating that the development of Trent Frederick and he's kind of the new age, you know, power forward. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It's not fighting 20 times a year. It's a handful of times, you know, Tom Wilson, the guy with, with Washington, who's been there for a while, you know, questionable hits at times. He hasn't had any this year, but, but he's a, this mammoth guy. And, and, you know, he's locked up to, to big deals because he's a unicorn type of player. And they're just hard to find. Size is not hard to find, but that style of ruggedness and the fourth liners, there was a guy, Nick Delorier is a kid who plays, he's kid, he's young guy plays for, um, uh, for Philadelphia now. I wanted him a couple of years ago from he was with Anaheim and he got paid more than many teams can pay at that fourth line physical position, Fred. That's mm-hmm. what happens because people then start overpaying when they're free agents. Uh, like, well, uh, we'll lock them up. You're worried about it too. I just don't like the idea of playing Florida in the playoffs or a, a team like that in the playoffs. It so just seems they to got a lot of it. You're right. They play yeah. a, they play a style that can wear a team down. There's yeah. no question. Billy, just real quick here. Um, do you think the Bruins are caught a little flat footed in this scenario because the team is better than they thought it was going to be? Uh, they're better than I thought they were going sure. to be. And maybe they, uh, who said sure? I said I said I'm agreeing with you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm asking Billy. I want Billy's opinion on this. He might disagree Billy, with both it, of us. Isn't this an obvious question, Billy? <laughs> isn't it a little <laughs> redundant at eight thirty-five when we're trying to stay on the new clock? Oh, the new clock is in play. I love it. We've had a new clock numerous times there. That this one is the new clock. Yeah, um, it's the newest listen. new clock. <laughs> it's all about TSL, um, baby. Are they, are they flat-footed? I mean, maybe a little bit. Are they bit caught short? off guard by how good yeah. they are? This is yeah, the question I don't that think, needed to be asked. So we I, I think that they, you know, they're yeah, they're probably pleasantly surprised. How's that? Absolutely, Hardy. They're they're in a place where, but but they're saying, look, let's go with this. They're seeing. The, this maturation of a couple of players, and it's not just young guys, it's guys like Coyle, right? Yes. Who has embraced yes. and really stepped up. And so, but in a good way, perhaps there. And now they say, well, maybe, you know, it's not that they're going to be, I still think, like I said before, Hardy, I think they're going to try to do something because Don Sweeney likes to help his team and to reward his team. He might be just not as able to go as big and maybe he just doesn't need to go as big that's that's the other thing maybe he just and it could be a small move in fred maybe there is a fourth line guy somewhere that they can figure out a way and it's just a third round pick that they can move for and it alleviates the salary cap situation for another team out there that is a middling team that's got to decide look for look calgary wallach mentioned it calgary made a big trade last night that was a big big trade for lynn home that I, i mean I don't see the Bruins doing that. They don't. They, they wouldn't no, no. do that. That's no, too no. much. But and I don't think they need that totally. But there could be another team like that. That's kind of a tweener team that finally has that recognition of you know what? Maybe we need to move a little bit of salary. We don't need to get we you know we'd love to get a first round pick, but we're not gonna. Bruins can figure out a way to use a different type of asset to get a player, and they can alleviate that. They may have to take a player off their roster too, which again I don't think they're against. Believe I I, I don't. Okay. Billy, uh, you could watch him on Ness and where are you now? Are you in Secaucus? I just got back. No, I'm uh I'm I am in uh back in Boston. Oh, Newton, thanks for coming and, in. Uh, uh, I got I, I I tried. The crazy day today and uh getting ready for Bean Pot. Bean Pot Monday and then the Bruins back at it on Tuesday mm. after the All Star. How are your kids like in school? 
Let's not go there, please. Mm. Let's, not, let's not go there. <laughs> you still a big union guy there, Billy? Let's get it. Let's get it uh, for both sides. Figured. Yeah, let's I'm, get it for I'm both sides. Jake, I'm forcing Jake onto the ice just about every day that I own. Oh, that's like, a shock. Go. Yeah, right. I'm pushing your kid. Won't be any resentment there at you all You love later. that there's no, no school. Fine. You love that there's no school. This, this is, is unbelievable. Yeah, that's for his boxing classes. What right. does he need school for? He's going to be a professional <laughs> hockey player. <laughs> yeah. All right, Billy. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. You guys. All right, yeah. that should have that should have ended two minutes ago, but Hardy needed to get that question. And will you please read this? Because I have to go number two. <laughs> That's why he wanted to break on time. <laughs> no, I'm trying something. Today. You know what? Quite coincidentally, we have a diaper update to get to. Yeah, we we t- we teased some. We had management coming in all over the place. After, oh yeah, after, after the, the show after the yesterday. Show, yeah, management was all over. This has got the ears of people. All higher ups. And how many emails did you get about this? Several. Several did I, earnest ones, too. Ooh, yeah. Boy. All right. Uh, we'll be back. Here are the headlines. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. <laughs> Wondering who made our list of the top five all time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on backstagecountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. Ta-da! We're back with Toucher and Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Ah, we are Toucher and Hardy. And this is the most, a song from the most dip- disappointing uh, video of all time. Yeah, I don't know what they're going for. Did, did you ever figure out, like, the, the woman in no. this video? Is Thank she... you. Okay. Okay, this is the tube, She's a Beauty. Right. Uh, it was, it's a bad song. But the, uh, the idea of the video is they go on a tunnel of love ride. And the whole song is about how she's the most beautiful girl in the world. So you're making a video, and there's this woman, and the ride is to go look at the most beautiful woman in the world. Correct. And it's this woman that is just about as average as average could be. Well, she's a very handsome woman. That's what Hardy contends she's handsome. And then he showed me a picture, because my memory's a little foggy of it, but then he showed me a picture, and I'm like, you're right, she is handsome. So then I asked, do you think it's that it's uh, someone who identifies as a woman... But but do you think it's like a, someone who was born a woman? I'd have to go back and watch because the then that again. changes the whole thing. Because then I get it. Yeah, I guess if it was if it's, but I never understood that as a kid. So if it was someone who has transitioned or is uh, who identifies as a woman, that woman, then I get the video. Yes, mm. I actually do. I'm not just being PC. I get it. But I I just assumed it was that there was no like uh, other thing to it. That it was just this is the woman. Uh, I I was really more like getting to the bottom of how they fa- because you know for music videos this used to be like a big deal and they would have casting calls and they would cast them like movies. This had to have been like a friend of a band member. Oh, this yeah. had to be you know. There's- oh, they were they were a San Francisco art rock band. Yes, <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, you know what they say about San Francisco? You who? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we we spent a little bit of time over the last couple of days talking about the new diaper spa in Atkinson, New Hampshire. And this has generated a lot of feedback, uh, a lot of emails. Uh, there was one email that claimed we were being insensitive on the subject and that we were not capable of empathy for the people who need a diaper spa. Um, and my take on that was uh, I... I have been on the record as saying that I wouldn't mind if the diaper spa was in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think you have every right to use the diaper spa. But if you're a grown man being coddled and dressed like a baby and being wiped and powdered and diapered, you expect me not to find that at all humorous because that's like the definition of funny. Like, like, like even like like, get home and and break out the bottle and have some fun. (laughs) Yeah. Like even, Mm -hmm. Like Benny Hill, like if he's dressed like a chick, you're like, like not like dressed like a chick, dressed like a baby. I'm sorry, dressed like a baby. Yes, you're like that's funny, like Google Gaga. Mm-hmm. Like you're not a baby, you're a grown man. All right. So what are the emails here, uh, Hardy? Well, there was one, and I heard this a couple of times myself yesterday, 
And I wondered the same thing as I heard uh, Mike Felger referring many, many times to crybaby Patriots. And he kept calling people diaper babies. Mm. And I wondered if Felger. Oh, that's like the N word. (laughs) You can't do that. Diaper babies. Every time Felger said this is from Dave Carter. Morning. Every time Felger said diaper babies yesterday, I flash back to your show yesterday. What is he for? Almost diaper made, babies. Almost made me cry. Yeah, that Newton School Board member might be an Atkinson, New Hampshire stayover soiled diaper baby candidate. I do think Felger was listening yesterday. He used the term diaper babies an inordinate number of times. Do you Maybe think there's Felger Freudian going on there? Do you think Felger? Because we were told in many of the emails, like, you probably know someone, like, like normal emails that weren't judgmental or, like, you know, pick it on us, that said, like, you probably know someone who's into diapers. Are you, are you making the ass? You're saying that it, by him saying diaper babies, that it was that part, part of his mind that he can't control, letting loose and giving us hints that he is into infantilism. It could be. Mm. And apparently it's prevalent enough to where an entire show was done about it. Mike Lockhart found this about the adult baby thing. I got several different crib toys to use at night to go to sleep. This one has bubbles and movement and music. The reason I like the heartbeat, this is puppy. I sleep with him every night. Of course, I'll always have my pacifier. The crib lets him sleep like a baby. But Stanley wanted to do everything that way. Hi, Chair. I wanted to get one for a long time. The ones online are a couple thousand dollars. Oh, well, that's just marketing it up. An adult high chair is a couple thousand dollars. Is is this a syntax situation? Is it like why smokes are 20 bucks now? I bet Dan O'Brien could build you one. He's real handy. Yeah. An adult high chair? Adult, no, I'm not in that world. No, oh. thank you. Well, if we did the contest for the all the 24 hours stay at the uh, adult diaper place in... New Hampshire, maybe maybe you could, Dan, just with your own hands up there in your cabin that you built with your own hands. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could do some woodworking and build us a, a nice adult size high chair because it's really BS. So now I got to be one of the 90, one of the 1% to get myself an adult high chair. Have you seen this guy? No. I couldn't afford that kind of thing. Yeah, he's so. probably, what, I, I mean, Lar- he's like a, large, a large individual. I, well, no, I'm, I'm imagining like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like I'm imagining like a. A Gosling type fellow. I'm thinking more like Harvey Keitel. You know, just kind of a man's man. I made something that was simple with with few tools that I had. Today, Stanley, I mean, this guy's got to sit there like an idiot and piece Fisher together Price, Fisher Price drill. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have? I had a plastic hammer that made a squeaky noise when I tried to pound the nails in. So yeah, it's yeah, not a very good uh, eye chair. Yeah, no, and, and like, yeah, all the nuts. There were no bolts at all. It was just it was just screws, plastic screws that are very feeble. I tried to vacuum my carpet, but all my vacuum just has these little balls that pop up when you run it back and forth. It, yeah, and good luck mowing the lawn. <laughs> Today, Same situation. Stanley eats all of his meals in his high chair, and he has a serious taste for kid cuisine. I like to have my meals, eat something, and watch cartoons. Just kind of have fun. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's nothing. Nothing. Um, we did. Get That's in- not something you should try to get past either. That's something you should just indulge in. That's not. I mean, there's a, a lot of stuff that gets that got to get it worked out there, and you shouldn't even take a step into working it out. You should. Just indulge it. Hardy had the best idea ever. It's like just like, I'm an alcoholic. Well, what you should do is you should just lock yourself in your house and drink all day. Yeah, just lean right into that. That's, and it's yeah. just like, yeah, don't don't try to figure out why or yeah. how to stop. Like, just, just sit there and stay stagnant right where you are. It's, it seems like to be an antiquated uh, idea of therapy. I just get more of it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. my idea would be like if you, if you went to a place that had a high chair and fed you like once a month, that's great. When you're eating all your meals entirely in a high chair, that's a problem. Like, if you told me I go to Golden Corral for every meal, I go, you got a problem. You're going to Golden Corral too much. Like, you're, you got an obsessive compulsive disorder. Like, you you, you got to eat somewhere besides Golden Corral. You got to you gotta do something else. This is too much. Like, if you're freaking out because you can't go to Golden Corral, they had to eat at McDonald's, you'd have a problem. If you have to eat every meal anywhere, that's a problem. 
Hydrate. Stanley has even tried baby formula. Most two-year-olds have moved on from baby bottles to sippy cups. But Stanley still isn't ready to give his up. You just want to get home and, and break out the bottle and have some fun. Refreshing. I like that the network put the creepiest music possible <laughs> behind it, too. It's not all that creepy for everybody. We got an email, Fred, from somebody who said, I had a girlfriend who wore diapers. She was pretty, outgoing, but sometimes she liked to wear diapers. How pretty? Because uh, I'd put up with it to a certain point, too, if she was good looking enough. Uh, Piper Fawn from OnlyFans level. I told pretty. you I like Piper Fawn for a It reminds me of my glory days. Uh, we first started dating. She told me early on about some difficulties in her childhood. The first time I visited her apartment, she gave me a tour, which included a room with an adult-sized crib and playpen and giant stuffed animals. If When you were single, if you went over to a girl's house, she was really good looking. Yeah. And cool and really good looking. And you yes. went over to her house. Yes. And like you were hooking up with her yeah. and she was, it seemed like this was going well. Mm -hmm. And you went into her room and there was a giant crib. Would you immediately leave? In no. all honesty. No. There's no way I would have left. No. Now I would. But again, this is the difference between being, if I was 27, 26, 25, and, and I was hooking up with a girl and, we, and she was that like super good looking. And I like that kind of good looking. It's probably happened to all of us once where you're like, I can't believe this girl's hooking up with me. Like this is it even happened with John Mayer with Jessica Simpson. He even a, a rock star was like, I can't believe I'm hooking up with this girl. Right. And then she just goes like she happened to have a crib. Now, the problem is, did she use the diaper? Uh, she noticed my surprise and told me sometimes she just likes to rest in her crib and play with her toys especially for jobs stressed her out. And she also said, sometimes I wear diapers and wet myself. A what? That's not that big a deal. Uh, sex with her was actually quite normal. Heterosexual relationship, nothing weird or kinky. Well, a whole... well, now that's unfair to gay people. Like it's, a, it's a heterosexual relationship. Well, like, like I'm going to put being gay is a lot more, I think... ab less abnormal than... Than wearing a diaper and urinating on yourself. You're, you're right. I don't want to get into a normal abnormal discussion because no, but those it just, terms it's a don't... normal heterosexual right, relationship right. as if it was homosexual. Now it's over the top. Now we're now we're going to turn <laughs> yeah. on. Now you. it's too much. They, they, that's not the way God wanted it. Uh, they uh, he said this. Apparently, there's a whole community like this. They have a convention in Chicago. I think she would go where you could buy adult sized play pens, toys, stuffed animals, and yes, diapers. Uh, the only reason why we broke up, she moved to a different part of the country, and uh, they, st uh, they still well, got along. Maybe we should do, like, ten contests to go to the New Hampshire thing, and then out of that ten, have, like, a celebrity one to go to the, the convention in Chicago. Yeah, there's... <laughs> that's and maybe the grand we could broadcast prize. from the Chicago convention. Oh, that's yeah, a grand prize. So there's, and we can just have adult babies on for a week. I'll, but I would just, I'll build the, I'll build the high chairs for the broadcast. Thank I would, you. I would just say at this point, you know, if, if if you don't feel like waiting for this contest to materialize, which, in all honesty, Fred, m might be a few two hurdles for us to jump over in order to get this contest on the air. If you just wanted to go to the Diaper Spa in New Hampshire and tell us about your experience, that would be okay, too. Well, our general manager came in unsolicited to our meeting and was, like, talking about the diaper thing, and she said her big worry was that a diaper would come off exposing someone. Mm. Right. And I'm like, that's what you came up with? That's your problem? You don't think these people know how to fasten a diaper, Mary? I mean, these are adults putting diapers on. Adults I think putting that... diapers on and playing with uh, little kitty toys. <laughs> that's him. All right, I've changed my opinion. This is very wrong. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. I have changed my mind on this whole thing. It is very, very wrong. Uh, we'll be right back.